Hello everyone. Welcome to this Shanghai Tower Grasshopper video tutorial. This is going to be the very first part where we actually dive into Rhino and start scripting in Grasshopper or making our script. Uh, what you see on your screen is uh, hopefully what you've already seen in the preview introduction video before this part 00. zero. Uh, this is going to be part zero 01. It, we're going to try to set up our initial parameters. Um, I will not worry about these yet because we will be creating these as we move on because then we will need them. So they will come along naturally. Don't worry about those. But we're focusing on um, the very first part, as you can see here. They may not look like very chaotic. They may not look like uh, what are we doing here. But the end result, let me show you, is actually very simple. This is just a point. Um, this is really the most simplest point that we're going to get. This is the center point of um, our tower. We can use this, we output this because we can see that it's going to be used later on in, any, in the script. Uh, very importantly, actually, after that is the base profile, the outline. And this outline is built parametrically using the parameters that we have here, for example, uh, angle, radius, and all that stuff, so that when you change these parameters, your whole tower will change. So that's going to be our end result, and whatever happens between is what I'm going to show you in this part. Now to get you started, I have actually provided two files to help you. Uh, if I open them up very quickly, so a plan view of the base profile with a uh, it, with only the necessary notation of what we're going to be using. For example, the work point one that you saw there, which is basically just a point anywhere you can put on your project, is going to be our anchor point more or less. The radius uh, from the second point, and then we have the third point, which is needed to define the smaller arcs. You have the big arcs, the small arcs, and then of course the angle for that signature groove, uh, which I will call the V-strike from here on out. And then we also have the elevation on the very right. And what you'll see here is the nine zones that I talked about in the preview tutorial, and the preview, sorry, video. And what this will do is actually act when we import it into Rhino to help us get a feel of the outline of the tower and more importantly, to get a feel of where these zones uh, standard are, where they are in the original design, more or less. Of course, you can change these if you wish. You can make, a, let's say, less zone, or you can make the hotel zone spanning, I don't know, one third of the length of the height of the tower, or something like that. But these two files I will provide to you. Um, I'm not sure if YouTube allows me to upload files like that yet, but I will provide the link in the video description and also on the video. So with that said, we'll uh, start opening up a new Rhino and a new blank grasshopper and we'll start getting our hands dirty and start working. All right, blank slate, here we go. The very first thing what we want to do is import these, the plan view in the elevation view for us. So in order to do that, we'll go to the command line and then we'll say picture. I think in Rhino 5 it's called picture frame or something like that. You have to Google that if you're still running on Rhino 5. But picture, it opens up a file dialog. Uh, in this case, my file dialog is uh, somewhere else. It's actually this one. So if you select the plan view, we'll just open that. We'll expand our top view. It asks us the first corner. Well, mm, I'll just select center and then I'm going to type in 0, 0, 0 because I just want it to be at the center. For now, I'm just going to scale it up to a certain scale. Now, what I tend to do is to scale my picture roughly to the size 1 on 1, what I've expected to do. You can use either the R1 value or the L1 value in order to have a gauge, in order to scale your picture basically to the right size. Um, my unit is set to millimeters, 
So what I want to do is I'm going to just draw a line. The starting point is going to be uh, it's going to be zero 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 again, and the end line. Well, the end line I'm just going to take this L1 value. So I'm just going to enter four seven five six five. So that's the length, and I'm going to uh, hold down shift in order for it to snap. Oh, wow. Okay, that's actually really long, is it? Really? Oh, okay. So apparently my picture is actually a lot smaller, but that's to expect because the grid was already quite small and I'm in millimeters. So that's to be expected. So what I'm going to do is actually just move because I noticed that my picture is not really in the center of it and it's really hard to see. Uh, what I'm going to do actually right out of the box is just adjust the transparency a little bit so I'm just gonna move this to about 50 60 70 yeah about 70 percent should be able to do it as you can see my picture is not really at the center of it but that's no worries I'm just gonna move I'm gonna click M roughly there I'm gonna snap it to that line so now I'm gonna do scale uh, throw from that from point around there all the way to where's my line there's my line so my picture should be on scale uh, I tend to also do a uh, what do you call it a, a check so I'm just gonna do a dim align actually or just dim doesn't really matter and hold down shift in order for it to auto snap okay I'm finding a lot of things I need to change right off the bat. So I'm just going to quickly change my linear dimension to, uh, in order for us to see it better, I, let's start with 1000. Okay, I swear I did not know 1000 would be a good number. Uh, we're just going to quickly update this too so that we don't have to do this again. So that when we draw another dim, it'll just show readable numbers in this scale. Basically, I'm just going to quickly undo that. Uh, let's check about wow well, I would say we're very close enough I mean this is just for reference mind you for us to have an idea of what we're looking at uh, actually what I also want to do in order to make sure that I don't accidentally select this and delete this I'm just gonna quickly create a new layer uh, I'm gonna change the picture to that layer and then I'm gonna lock that layer so that I can come in here and just control all delete uh, we're gonna do the same thing actually for the uh, the elevation so I'm just gonna switch to oh I was like why is it yellow um, elevation should we, should, should we take I'll take the front we can always rotate that so again picture uh, gonna be this one well at this point it doesn't really matter where I put it because we have to change it anyway oh I forgot to change that, but that doesn't matter. We have to change this anyway. Uh, for now, I'm just going to quickly give it a big, uh, big size. And let me see. I'm just going to quickly move this. Uh, I'm going to move around there in the middle of the tower to 0000. zero, zero, zero. Now, um, it's not written here, but we've said that the tower is about 632 meters. So we're going to do the same exercise here. We're going to say a line that starts 0000, zero, zero, zero and 600, 632,000 millimeters. That's this height. It's, oh wow, it's pretty, okay, that's a lot. Anyway, so doesn't matter. We're going to do this. We're going to scale at the bottom and we're gonna hold shift actually because I wanted to snap I'm gonna aim for that tip there or actually here doesn't really matter where because if it's faulty it doesn't matter because then we'll well then we'll know mm, this is really hard to do you know what I'm just gonna take the tip if it's not the right side we can change that later so then we'll scale all the way up there there we go and now I'm going to right click on my layer, put my 
picture on that layer. I'm just going to delete the line. Oh, uh, one thing I forgot to do is to change setting out. Wait, it's not the same, is it? Oh, the material was not created yet. Okay, so let's do about six seventy percent around there, and I'm going to lock it. All right. Uh, at this point, you might want to consider saving uh, to a new file. So if you go here, well, obviously we can move our tower a little bit to the uh, to the right because if you look at these, it doesn't really fit. So something like that. I'm going to turn that off because I will, we won't be focusing that uh, for a while because we'll be focusing on this one. All right, uh, now Grasshopper. Um, let's start with creating the point. So we're just going to do point construct, I believe. Yeah. This takes 15 milliseconds. So it's not doing anything. OK, anyway. Um, we'll have that. That's there. So what I want to do is um, with this, you can, well, if you put a slider into any of these, you can actually move your tower or you just create a new point there, uh, whichever you want. But I am going to create a point first because then I can name, toggle the naming, and then I call it WP1, work point one. I'm going to hide that so that I have my point. Uh, the next thing I want to do is create uh, the sliders for these. Um, uh, for the R1 parameter. So I'm just going to create, uh, let's see, should we create a bound for it? I'm not sure. Let's, yeah, let's start with a bound. 20,000, which is not a lot. It's just 20 meters is less than 800. No, it's less than the number that we want, which is 88380 is less than let's say we'll go to a maximum of 150,000 so now we're going to call this you can guess it r1 or actually in order to make sure that we're calling it right we'll call it radius r1 uh, the reason why using cap is well at work we use cap for every parameters i don't know why it's uh it's been like that ever since i joined the company so that sort of has stuck to me. I'm going to create a quick copy of this because we can actually use the same range for the L1. So instead, we're going to quickly edit this. We're going to call this 47565. There we go. Um, I'm going to create, give this a more descriptive name. For example, what's this thing called now? Okay, well, we'll just call it distance. Wait, uh, yeah, distance. This trends, no, distance. WPO1 to WPO2. This should be more descriptive enough because that's what it is. Okay, and. Uh, We'll probably need that one too, so I'm just gonna make a new copy again. We're gonna call this angle. Oh, what happened? Oh, we're gonna call this angle a one. How much is that? Oh, that's a degree. That's oh, this number is not good for it. All right, let's uh, let's drop a minimum down to. We don't want to drop it down too much. So I'm gonna say ten with an angle of. 40, something like that. Play it safe in order to make sure that we don't accidentally overshoot our number. Oh, we need to enable two decimal. And this is, oh, one decimal is also enough actually, because why would you need two? If you want, you can enable that, no worries. Um, at the same time, what I want to do is actually attend to do snapping for our default value so that when I mess something up, I know that, well, what I mean by that is there's going to be a snap here. So if I, oh, it will just snap to that number. If I happen to mess things up and I'll need to go quickly back to the default values. 
All right, uh, I think we need nothing else. We can also create that one actually. The 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 groove which we call the V strike angle. So I'm gonna just call this angle V strike. That one is a little bit higher, so I'm gonna increase our maximum to um, 80, I believe. And then we're gonna set the value to 47.5. There we go. All right. So the next part we want to do is to dissect the plan to make it into buildable parts. And if I can illustrate that briefly with my Epic Pen, uh, what you can, what you will see if you haven't noticed already, is if you were to have a cut here somewhere there, this one is easy because, well, there's a line through it. Um, this is part. It's a segment of a circle same as the other three so for example please don't mind my drawing skills it's i'm not really skilled at drawing with a mouse on the screen now what you notice here these three are actually segments of a circle with this as a center point and this well as a radius so that's what we want to do we want to have wp.1 here and to create that segment and then we have this one here to create this segment so create okay, two, one, three, or however you want to name it, right? In the same fashion, uh, what we can also see is we're going to be creating this one with this one as a center point, and the same obviously for these. For this one, it's uh, different because we have the groove obviously, but we'll find out how to cut that off uh, uh, in later. So we don't worry about that. Well, let's focus on the blue one first. So we'll create that one. And quickly wipe this and go back here. So now that we have that set, uh, what we want to do is to create the the two uh, the create three work points number two first. So we are just going to double click here. We're gonna uh, we're gonna have to first move to the x value with the distance that we're gonna use here, so that we have that. Now you can do this. You can just say, you know what, um, that point, and with this move, I have WP.1. Now I just need to figure out to duplicate that to the other three. Well, that's easy. Uh, what we want to do here is we're just going to quickly create a series. Uh, we know we have three. You can actually go crazy and import a, uh, a parameter uh, slider here, but We'll stick to the original design. There's going to be three numbers, I think. Yeah. So let me open up the panel for us to visualize what we're doing. And what we want to do now is to plug in, uh, we don't have that made here, the angle between the, the first line and the second line, which uh, if you watch the video or the lecture from Lawrence Tech University or the previous video, the spoiler was uh, that I reviewed it, the angle where how the tower twist is 120 degrees. So uh, let me see, should I put in a number? You know what, let's put 20 is less than 120 is less than 350. It's going to be the maximum. Uh, I think I'm going to put that around there. So what am I going to call this? Actually, no idea. Uh, was a twist angle. So we're just going to call this the twist angle. So we can also input that here, and then we have the three angles in uh, which it will twist, basically. So now what we want to do is we have already access the x-axis um, vector, which uh, makes the second W P one. But we can also plug in a rotation of vector this one so we can rotate the existing vector by uh, these three numbers in degrees of course so i have to right click on the a degrees i put it there oh wait not this one obviously because we need one more all oh, right of course we want to rotate around a uh, the vertical axis 
as you can see on my screen, I would have three points, which are the three W uh, work points number two. Um, so now, what we can do is start making a circle, which will be this one. Uh, before that, well, let me plug in a point here because I suspect that we have to graft some of these. I'm just going to quickly call this WP.2. There we go. Uh, actually, I might want to graph from here. Well, we'll see how much we need. So if I plug in that for here, just for now, uh, we're going to use the R1 value to create the circle. See? Ah, probably shouldn't have done that because I wanted to keep this here so that I can draw over it again and again. But anyway, that's small things. So we can actually hide that because I don't need to see that. Now we need to find a way to cut these um, circles around that point. I mean, that one is easy. So uh, if I were to draw, well, that's not really the right way. I think it's somewhere here. So we're going to be using this A1 value to make these two lines in order for us to cut our circle. Let me clean that again. So let's start that. All right, let's start that one. Um, let's get the vectors going first with the A1 value. So I'm going to actually move this out a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and create, let's start with a rotate back because we need that. And one thing what I tend to do, I'm just going to create a two-point vector uh, coming from point two to work point one. I mean, I can use the same one, but if I, let's say, change this one, I want to make sure that whatever happened downstream is just going to follow that change instead of coming the change from here. Um, just to give uh, ourselves uh, a little bit of linearity in our script. So from point two to point one, I'm just going to make a vector this way so we can actually visualize what we're doing. Uh, anchor point is that, and we'll go here. All right, so these now points were there, but we need to rotate these again. Uh, looking at the data structure, I might have to graph any of these in order to make sure, but we'll continue on to see where we need to graph. Um, this is the vector. Obviously, I want to rotate around the z axis vertically. So I'm just going to plug that in immediately. And to use this value, we know we need to rotate that in two ways. So I uh, one's up and one's down. So I'm just going to quickly create a negate in order to convert this into a negative. And just I'm going to merge the negative with the positive so that I have two values in one go. Uh, like that. I don't need a D3. Okay, just kick that out. Turn the rolls off and plug that in here. And then I can visualize it like that. As you can see, I'm only getting, oh, I do need to right click on the A and convert it to degrees. As you can see, I'm only getting three instead of what I expect six uh, because two vectors from each point. So I need to graph, either I can graph here, graph here, or graph from the source. So if I, for example, graph from this part, because I suspect I, I might need to use this uh, vector again. And once I've done that, you'll see that from each point uh, becomes its own tree, it becomes its own branch. And that will trickle down to, so what basically doing here is every vector of this is going to be rotated twice. Uh, if that makes any sense, kind of rotated first negatively and then positively with 23.3 uh, degrees. And that give us, oh, I should not put that. And that gave us these two uh, vectors. So as you can see, it aligns perfectly well from uh, uh, what we wanted to do. And that's what I'm going to do is we create real geometries in order for it to actually intersect with our circle. So I'm just going to do quickly create a start direction and length line. And obviously they start from point two. Let me just do that. 
and what else? The direction. Well, the direction is obviously our new line. Now I'm just going to quickly turn off that. Now the length. So let me visualize this with a arbitrary number like that. Oh, there we go. So the length. We need to make sure that they're long enough to intersect. Um, you might say, okay, let, why not just make it a, a few billion and that uh, will be done with it. I mean, yeah, you can do that. Or you can uh, just make sure that we apply a, um, uh, a formula that will always work. For example, uh, let me get rid of this one first. For example, uh, we have the radius, right? We know the circle is not going to be bigger than its radius. So what we can do is actually take, you know, this is now the time where I want to come in here. Oh, not that one. I want to come in here. Why am I creating the same one number? This one. When I want to create a buffer so that I can quickly copy this and not have to reference the uh, this one, uh, the slider. Let's make it a little bit clean. So and whatever comes in, you can hide it. In uh, if I do want to use somewhere else, so we won't have lines in the end. Uh, all over our canvas. So I'm just going to quickly, this is a neat trick. Um, if you want to take the name from the slider and apply it directly here, what you can do is when you left click drag, you press once Alt, you see it turns red, you plug it in, and you see that it takes the name. You just need to toggle the name, and it takes the name from that uh, particular previous component. So I need, I can control shift and move every line there and connect it once so that I have this one. So I can actually come in here and plug it in this one. Now you notice that, okay, this is actually fine, right? It, it, it's exactly there. But to give ourselves a little bit more assurance that it's actually intersecting, what I tend to do is just right click on the L. I'm going to go to expression. Uh, you can click on expression editor or just edit here. Uh, for this simple, we'll for the sake of showing what we're going to do, we're just going to click on the expression editor, which opens the editor. X is our um, uh, input. We're going to say X times 1.1. And with this, we know for sure it's intersecting. So now we uh, can actually intersect them. And uh, let's have a look at our data tree. It's three branches and two items in each branch still. Um, so that's fine. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we want to intersect them. So we're going to go to intersect and it's going to be a curve to curve intersection like this one. So obviously we want to intersect. So I can actually delete that one. Uh, get rid of this one. Yeah, we can't intersect a circle. Now the next thing is asking for a single curve. But we have two curves. So quickly what we can do is just Join the curves. <laughs> so we can apply that here. Um, I may be going a little bit fast, but we want to make sure that we're applying the right curves to the um, to the right circle. So what we're going to quickly do, I'm just going to make a quick test. So I'm just going to list item number one, uh, flatten this for now, so I can actually just select number one. So number one is the Alter, utter uh, right circle. And the same should be for this one. And it is. So if I select these two together, these are the, the curves that we want them to intersect and to test that our theory is right. And we're going to just quickly create a two here and two here. I'm not sure where two is. Oh, there's that one. So with this, we can conclude that we are intersecting the right curves with the right circle, right? Oh, wait, let me turn that back on. Now, what we can do now is uh, we shatter the curve. So we're going to do here. We're going to shatter our circles, right? Now, TA is the parameter on which these um, points consist. Let me turn off WP2. And... A is our circle, so we obviously needs A as a parameter, right? So now, if I have a look at our 
we got two. In my head, for some reason, I was expecting three items, but it's actually one because you have one, which is the segment that we want, and the rest. So if I, for example, do a quick list item from the scatter, I'm going to turn everything off. Um, see that we have exactly the ones that we need. Now, in the event that Grasshopper just doesn't listen and select this one instead, what do you do then? Well, if that happens, then your whole script will just blow up. It won't work anymore. So what I tend to do is I build in an explicit check, right, to make sure I always have this part selected and not the other way around. Well, there's a simple logic we can implement here. And what I do is if we take the length of both segments and we know, right, we know for sure the segment that we want is always going to be shorter than the rest. So that's just why we implement this one. See the length, the, these are the length of the both segments. And we can sort this, right, to K the number uh, synchronously to the items that we want. So now it's sorting it by, you'll see that it looks the, the, the same because, well, in our case, Grasshopper is just doing the same thing. But in the event that, uh, let's say, in the first list, the high number is at the top, and once we sort of this, the lower number will always be at the top. So when we select list item number zero, it will always be the smallest item. So in this case, it's just two, two checks that we implement that will help us or that will take your mind off of this so you don't ha ever have to come back here and think about, wait, do I have the right curve selected or not? So um, just a simple trick in order to make sure that our script is solid and will always work in this case. The, the prob if any problem occurs, it's probably not going to be this part. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get at. All right, now we have the first part selected. So now um, what I want to do is, uh, well, get the smaller one ready. The, the smaller the, from the DW3 point. For that to do, we need the WP work point number three. Work point number three is a little bit tricky um, in the sense that I couldn't really find a reliable value that uh, that give us the the radius from three to the smaller circle, and even if that was a value, I would expect that to be a decimal value. So I don't want to rely on inputting a manual uh, number to define this radius because it would mean that it would not connect well within uh, for for the segment that we've already created. So what I want to do is try to make our own uh, small radius for work point three. And one way we're going to do that is first off, we need our uh, work point. So let me see, check back. Well, as we can see here, we can utilize the vector that we already have, uh, which I just deleted the vector display, so we can't really see it. Uh, let me turn vector display. I think it was this one, I believe, or not. Nope, not that one. I think it's this one. Yeah. So we want to select one of those, right? So one way we can do that is if we do a list item. Let's see. So we can actually select that one. It doesn't really matter which one we select. You just want one of those uh, so that it intersects with the lines. Okay. So with that being said, we need to have a line line intersection or a curve curve. Uh, is there anything I can use from here? I think it's safer to just make a line instead, to be honest. So it's a physical, and I don't think I have a mathematical line, line, intersection, line, plane, curve, plane. Well, there's these two, line, line. 
but I don't think it accepts. Yeah, it doesn't accept vector. We need a line for that. But this is what we're going to use. What we can do though is uh, we can actually just take these lines instead of the vector. There we go. I mean, then we don't need that. We just have this one. So we have the first line. So that's good. So we need the second line, which is a one that's way, way beyond that. I think it's this one we can do. Oh, that's a vector. Uh, all right, let's make a SDL from point number one, starting point. Direction is going to be, how many is this? It's going to be this one. The length, uh, what's the length that we have here? We can use the same one actually. We can just do this. Well, no, not really, because I mean this also suffices actually. Then we know for sure that it's always going to be uh, it's always going to be connected. So now let's see. The tree is each item in their own branch, and the same here. So if I do this. I'm selecting the wrong one because let me visualize if I were to bring up my trusty list item and get rid of that for now actually yeah no this one can stay let me just move those up there I'm just gonna create a two so that we can have a little bit more to look at if I flatten this and flatten that one if I turn this off, look, we're now connecting the wrong lines, as in the order of these lines is uh, not really what we want, right? So what we want, actually, let me visualize that first so that we, so that you know what I'm talking about. If we want to have this line, we actually want this line, not that one. An easy way for us to do that is to shift the list. So we're just going to shift the list and we can just basically decide which one we want to shift. So I'm just going to shift this one instead. Uh, but first off, of course, we need to flatten this. And at the end of the day, we're going to graph this back up so that we. Oh, I just the default shift apparently sufficed. So if I select this, put this back in here, and hide this, you see that now we have to correct intersection. See, it's exactly where we want it to be. So if I just check the other ones, it's always going to be good. Okay, so that one checks out. Uh, I might need this. I'm just going to leave that one there. For example, I'm going to be uh, making it back up. So now we can actually create a point. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. I'm selecting way too many things at once. Just gonna do point point B. Is point B the same as point A? So I'm just gonna take one. Well, at least I think it's yeah, it's the same thing. So I'm just gonna call this WP03 because that's what it is. Now with this point now selected, uh, we can go ahead and find our radius. Okay. Uh, one second, let me see. So now what we can do is we want to intersect or have some sort of geometry that comes from WP.3 riding this uh, vector and connected to that one. So I think that one is a curve, I believe. It's not a line. It's not a straight line. It's a curve, obviously. So it's off like curve. So we need, we can't reuse this one. This one comes from line line. We can't, oh, well, then it's curve line. So the curve goes in here. We still need that line. So what we're going to do is going to just quickly create an SDL that comes from this point, And we need the vector that we use there. I'm not sure. Maybe you can use this same vector actually, uh, which come from there, which is an SDL. Okay. Well, 
you know what? Oh, we'll just we'll, we'll do it this way. I mean, we can obviously just use this one instead, and then we could just do this. Let me give this give this a crazy number so we can visualize something like that. We could do that. Um, like I said, if you're sure what you're doing here, of whatever, whatever changes you make here will not propagate through the rest, then yeah, you can definitely do that. But if I look at this closely, this one plugs in here, which will give it this one. Mm, if we decide to change the other way around, then we might have an issue, right? So to play it safe, to make sure that every data comes from where we expect it to be, I'm just going to do quickly do a, um, what is this called? Endpoints from this line. And what we hope to do is just going to make a two point vector from start to end. And let me quickly visualize how that looked like. And exactly the same uh, vector that we want it to be. So that's good. I'm just going to hide this quickly. And that's going to be my well, direction. I believe, and we'll see. Yeah, well, we don't really need them to intersect because the computer will then just uh, well, compute those mathematically. So we can actually just leave it like that. So the, the, the line distance doesn't, doesn't really matter here. We can actually put it to one, it'll still work, right? So we can have that. And what we have here is if we quickly create a distance, we will, I believe this is the point that we need. We have a radius for the smaller circle. See, it's not the perfect uh, round number. It's going to be a crazy number because the, you can, the tangency of this creates this rare uh, if you want this to be tangent, the larger circle with the smaller circle, it will it will have this effect. That's what I'm trying to say. So let me. Oh, again, we actually have that one. You know what? Let's leave these on. So now we create the same thing. We go the circle from that point to this one. So now we know these circle fit uh, neatly or they connect, they touch that point where the bigger curve will end. Okay. Um, now, what we want is, let's see, we want to have the endpoints from this. To be on our circle so that we can shatter it again and then do the same trick basically to get our segment back and then at the end of the day we can uh, obviously after we've made the group we can join it together and we will have the output that we want for this part all right so in order to get the points away I believe we have it somewhere yeah we can use that one so let me actually hide a lot of things so that we can see a lot better and we can actually hide that one too like so and let me see yeah you can actually hide that one and we'll have this one also um, what we want to do is we want to utilize these points that we have here these six points because those are the points that we need so I'm going to do a point closest to closest point, I believe is this one. The point that we want to search from is obviously our WP point uh, three. Well, in the event where three is closer to one than uh, or two, or when you have a very small radius that the smaller circle you see here actually gets so small that it will interfere that we have a problem but at this point of scale uh, I don't foresee that we're gonna have a problem with um, this component selecting the wrong point so what we want to do is have the six point going here 
Oh wait, I should actually mention that I want the other one because we want to select more than one points. Because that one, this one only selects one point. So let's move everything down here. Oh, uh, that one didn't go. There we go. And we want to flatten this because we want the original three points to search from every six point. And here's the trick. We don't want it to search for three points. We want it to search for two. So I'm just going to quickly edit this. And if I quickly do a tree branch to look at the group, I'm just going to, you don't have to do this uh, for yourself, but you can even follow along and you can see what's happening. So as you can see here, you can see the green highlighting on the right side. If I switch this, now it's the top side which indicates that our sorting closest point is working, right? Now that we have the points, um, remember that these points are still based on the bigger curve, on this curve. And we want to make absolutely sure that these points are in fact on the smaller circle. So what we want to do is we want to uh, do a points closest to the curve and I don't know which one it is now is it not this one point curve curve closest point there we go so what it's asking us is the point to project onto a curve well we have those and the curve we want to project onto will be this one so let me actually one more time, make sure that we have the same curve. So that one is the top. If I quickly do a tree branch, I believe it was still the top point. Oh, all right. I need to select zero. Yeah. And they are. So that I can make sure that I can be sure that the data that I'm inputting here is exactly what I expect them to be. So as you can see here, I mean, if you can double check whether or not they're coinciding, I believe this is going to be very small. It's still a number. It's still, it's in an ideal world, this should be zero. Then I don't have to do this, right? But as you can see, it's not. And this could create problems for us. And hence, I want to drag, in essence, drag the point onto small circle and now I can actually go ahead and not shader but shatter shatter this one with the T values and again oh, now I can actually see am I showing the right curve yeah, so this is a perfect example where the, uh, where is it, where is it, where are you, where we sorted the line first come into play. So in essence, we can actually copy this. So as you can see here, for two of those, it's selecting the right segment. But for this segment, it is not. Okay. So now we can actually just uh, evaluate the length, asynchronize, and voila. Now we have, it's hard to see, I don't know if you can still see it, it's green on the outer edge. So that, coupled with this, uh, let me just show you, uh, if I do a join, I should not done this in my previous iteration, so if it fails, I'll be a laughing stock. <laughs> I'll be so disappointed. It should be closed. Yes, and it's closed. So precisely the data I expect it to be, and it's tested, verified, and that's right. All right, um, that's one part. The next part is, I'm not even sure how long I've been recording this video, uh, is to make the groove, because we have everything else already. Now, the groove part is a little bit tricky, uh, in the sense that uh, same thing with the radius for WP.3. Uh, I couldn't really find reliable information regarding this, so I just have to play uh, or get the geometry as close as I can to the drawing. 
Uh, first thing I'm going to do is one of these will be a groove. Now, based on the drawing, it's going to be the lower one, but it could have been any of the other two, right? So what I want to do is uh, you can actually just do a list item. You know, you can just say, you know what, let's just list item. Oh, uh, not that. Oh, not this one. List item one, and then just call the others. That's fine. That's fine. But um, in that case, you can just use this one, and then you can just cycle among them. Uh, where are you? There we go. But if you were to say call, let me see. I think you can. And then you have to do the wrapping on. I believe. Then I have to do this. Then I call this one. So now I'm selecting the top one. The calling will get rid of that one. So this is one way you can do this. And then you can just select which one you want to delete or not. So let's stick to the, <laughs> let's stick to the drawing. We'll, we'll take index number one. This one we'll use for later. This one will be joined later. So I'm just going to turn everything off except for this one. Okay. Um, now, uh, what I want to do is actually get this point right here because what I want to do is I'm going to quickly visualize it so that we are on the same boat. We know that point three is about here and we want this point and we have no data on this point. We, we, we don't know where it is, but we can make that into a um, parameter so that we can, in this case, dictate how deep we want the groove, right? So I want to have these two points and then here and then this second point here is going to be directed by uh, where on this line do I want that point. And then we just apply the same trick that we did here and then just cut that off and make that into uh, the groove that we want it to be. So that's the idea and let's try to see if we can put that into our grasshopper script. First things first, I need that point, the W3 point. Now you can select it from here, but then we have to fit it around with uh, which point is it. And remember that we've used a different radius than what the point is giving us. So in order to make sure that we don't go back too much to the beginning to use a component that uh, it's still, you know, the best thing is if you can work linearly like this, uh, I would suggest doing that unless it's really like uh, cost a lot of computational time, but an easy way. But this, what we're doing is not. So it's pretty light and I would advise to do that too. What we can do, since we know that this is an arc, we can do a center. Uh, not this one actually, wait, no, it's an arc deconstruct, there we go. What the arc deconstruct does is, well, it deconstructs the arc and give us a point. And the point is on this side, so we just do point as a geometry. This is actually our sort of like improvised WP point. And the reason why I'm doing this is there is going to be a slight variation and I want to get rid of the slight variation. I don't want to work with the slight variation that we have. So hence I'm doing it this way and it spots fairly light, a few milliseconds. Um, the next one we want to do is actually get the end point. Uh, I'm going to use that using a curve evaluation based on this thing. So if I do here, remember to reparametize it so that when we put in 0.5, in the T, we know that we will have the center of that curve. If you don't reparametize it, yeah, I don't even know what point that is. So reparametize basically means like um, the T parameter will for this curve is going to be 0 to 1 and 0 0.5 is exactly the middle of that. Okay, all right. Um, and now what we can do is let's create a vector from these two things that we created. Do I still have that one? Yeah, I still have this one here. So it's going to be from that point whoop, to this point, And it's going to look like that. It's very good. Actually, I don't need to see this. Now to get the other point in the middle that we want, um, 
we might have to play, let me switch that off, let me drag this a little bit down. We can do, let's see, we, obviously we'll do a move, right? We'll move that point along the vector. And how much we want to move along, we can dictate that. Let's say we want to move it two-thirds. Two-thirds will be, what was it, 66.7? And the reason why I'm using amplitude is we have the vector. And amplitude, what it does is it will we parameterize the same vector based on a amplitude that we give it. It's either 0 to 1 uh, or more if you want it longer. Um, but we'll have it on this, uh, uh, what do you call this? Amplitude. Oh wait, I'm actually missing one step. This will not give us a right um, amplitude because the amplitude uh, basically does is it takes the length of the existing vector and apply how long you want it to be, right? I don't know if that makes sense. But what, what I'm going to do, yeah, or actually what I'm missing here is actually I want this length, which is, of course, the radius. <laughs> but we'll just take this. It doesn't matter if we take it from here, from the R, or from here. It's the same thing. What we want is we want to say x times y. Why x times y? Because then we are saying like, hey, I want two-thirds of the length of your vector, which it's about that point. If if we go on, and then we can apply that to the uh, amplitude, and then we do this, and you'll see that we're more or less arriving at the point where we want it to. So if you want a, a, a deeper groove, you just decrease this. If you want a very shallow groove, you do that, right? But we'll stick to two-third because that fits with our drawing. I'm going to snap that too. I don't expect you to change as much. I mean, you can, but I don't expect that to happen as often. So I'm just going to leave this here instead of putting that one here. I mean, you can. Uh, it's up to you. The same goes for where you want a, the groove to be, you know, if you want it. It's all possible. So now I got my point. Okay, now we do the same exercise as we did for the other ones, which is we need now. Let me just copy this one and I'm just going to reuse. Uh, I think this is a good time to do this, do that, do this, and do that. To separate our parameters, the initial ones. So I'm just gonna quickly. Uh, actually, this should be done like in the beginning. So we just replace that. This. Why is this three back in here? I thought I deleted that. But anyway, we'll drag that all the way. Where do we need it? We need it. Around here. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, we're going to create an SDL that comes from this point. The direction, we're going to rotate a vector. Mm -hmm. And the vector we're going to rotate is obviously this one around the Z. So I'm just going to quickly make a Z here. And apply this one. <clears throat> wow, I think my voice is leaving me from talking for so long. Um, hope I can finish this part before my voice completely disappears. But anyway, let's start. Let's 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 not waste any more time. I mean, that's uh, that's about right, right? So we're gonna do that. The direction goes in there, uh, and now the length. Hmm. What do we want the length to be? Well, I have a pretty good idea. If we say, right, the length is the radius, we are for short sure covered. Unless you put this like this, like, like that. Huh. In that case, it might be a good idea to limit this 
to a number so that we can never get lower. So we can always have a curve. Now I can see that curve doesn't really intersect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to say x times, I don't know, a half, one and a half, just to make sure that it always intersects. OK. Uh, same thing. Uh, we will join our curve, and then we will go to a curve curve intersection. Actually, what did I use in the beginning? This one. Curve curve intersection. Oh wait, uh, let's just copy this one. Let me drag it all the way up at there. Uh, U is gonna intersect with that one. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and now, uh, let me see. What do we have here? We have these two points, and then what we want to do is uh, shatter. We're going to shatter first our curve and then the other line. So we're going to shatter this one. Uh, the shadow came from the A, so I'm just going to select that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you can see here, it's, it's a different. But for this one, it's a lot simpler. Because we have three segments, Grasshopper will not mess up your ordering in the sense that, oh, you know what? The left one is now 0, the right one is 1, and the middle one is 2. No. Um, the middle one will always be 1. Oops. Ah, oh, come on, Grasshopper, work with me. There we go. I mean, wait, actually, this, this is the one we want to call. Sorry. We don't want that one. So we actually just want to say call this one so that we have the two sides. And now we want the V strike. We want this one. That one's a little bit simpler. Actually, is it simple enough? Actually, I'm thinking out of my head now. We do need a shatter again. And we have this one here. Uh, let me see. If I reshatter based on these two points, you are shattering the curve here, right? In this case, what we want, we want to select the middle one. There we go. OK, OK. And now we should have this one. Let's, uh, should we merge these? We should, you know what? Uh, let's entwine this. Doesn't really matter at this point if you entwine or merge. It's all going to be the same thing. But what I want to do is actually, uh, the reason why I want to use entwine is now, right, I can um, throw in everything let's say this one is that one this one is also belonging to you so i'm just going to throw you here and that exists into one uh what do you call that one branch now for the other ones i mm, actually don't really need to and fine i can actually use a merge and that will be fine but yeah let's do it like this then what do I have? Oh, right, the, the big circles. I don't know where they are. Are these the ones? Yeah, they are the ones. So I'm just going to put this one, drag, put this one here. And there we have it. The last one we want to do, you might want to join these curves. Of course, we have to flatten. You know what? Let's flatten on this side. In case we want to have the data structure we have. So that is a closed planar curve. Okay, 
And let me see, do I have anything else that I should be doing? Right. Um, at this point, you might think, okay, then we're done. Um, what I want to uh, actually prepare ourselves is if you, for example, uh, do a point on curve. You notice that our starting point is there. Like, where is there? Right? What we want is to have either the starting point in here or here. Because it helps us. If you look at um, reference picture of the tower, you notice that um, right next to the, the curve, there's got, there are these like triangular panels. Wait, let me show you. I think I still have the uh, open. There we go. Uh, do I have anyone that I can sh quickly show you what I'm talking about before we make this into a very long video? Um, I don't see it. Oh no. There was one where I saw the triangular panels really good. Hmm. Can I click on any of these? Nope, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to show you that from this one, this one, this one. Yeah. Oh, maybe from this one. Yeah. I hope you can see that. You see these panels here? There are very, um, there are exception panels to fill the gap, basically. Hence the reason why I think, uh, is why I, I, I think we should move, prepare ourselves, prepare our, uh, our base curve. So we have that point there. And that's quite easy to do because if you do a discontinuity on this curve, obviously the discontinuity will be on the V-strike because that's where the kinks are, right? Uh, it's where it's not continuous, not tangent. So what we can do is actually we uh, just select like one point. It doesn't really matter which point. Uh, default value is like that point. All right, fine. That's good. Um, and then we're going to do is uh, points closest to curve in order to get ourselves the T parameter because we want to move the seam. Oh, wait. The point should go there, not the, not the curve. So that you get the T parameter. And now what we can do is move the seam. Basically, move the starting and end point of your curve. So I'm just gonna move seam. Oh, not that one. Seam move. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we'll move this one to this one. And now, watch what happens if I'm gonna close everything. If I select this one now, see. And now, although it moves the other way, we probably want this to uh, to move the other way. So we probably have to flip our curve. Curve. So flip this curve mm. like that, and it moves the other way around. And now, what we can do is finally we say here, hey, this is now our base profile. Not these, obviously. And um, we also might want to take on WP.1. You know, just going to select that and drag it all the way here. So that we can use those in any future uh, script that we might have. So that's in essence, uh, it's a very long video. Uh, I've cut this in part, but I'm pretty sure it's a very long video. But that's the preparation that we've done in order for us to have a, a strong, solid foundation. So if you were to play with any of these, oh, wow, apparently that creates that difference. But that's because this should actually change accordingly. Interesting. 
Yeah, this is going to be a very fat one if you do it like this. But uh, you get what I mean. This is very interesting. Yeah, so you can create those. Uh, I'm not sure what my default value is. This one doesn't really matter as much. Um, there's a difference here. We might have to, one second, let me put in this one here. So in the event that we have this twisted at uh, this point, I think we are, we might have to disconnect this one because the, uh, starting from zero with a value like that, it's not going to work. So I'm just going to disconnect this in a second, disconnect that curve. I'm just going to insert here a hard-coded value of 120. So that we have to use this, so they can use this later on and not uh, here, because I don't think that was, in hindsight, that was not wise to do. That's because uh, we're using this one here. That's the reason why um, the change that I mentioned in the beginning, if you were to change any of these, um, they will have to go with it. And that's the reason why I don't use, uh, if you're not sure what the effect is going to be, if you use connect everything to the beginning uh, components, in terms of uh, parameters, it's, I think it's safer to do. But in terms of these connecting to these components, things might change and it will give you unexpected results. So that's a big final change that I want to mention that we've made. Um, with that, I'm going to stop the recording uh, for this part and hopefully in the next part it's going to be a little more fun rather than just staring at 2D. So I hope you stick around and learn something from this part and I'll see you in the next one.